So, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say about this mechanical transduction cell, cell sense materials, yeah, part two. So, last week we are learning about how the cell sense the matrix, and then you guys have to understand the propagation of the mechanical force from the integrins and actin and then being complex which link to the actin and nucleus membrane and the final nucleus and then we can know how the cell sends the extracellular matrix and then affect the DNA and then finally mRNA expression and then DNA production so this is very important and then Anyway, the cell sends the extracellular matrix, the mechanical force, and then they can communicate with the force factor, which is one of the important biochemical signaling. So in case of mechanical force, they are very fast. Fast means within few milliseconds, this force can transfer to the nucleus, and then cell immediately sends the mechanical force or ex extra cellular matrix. But in case of a growth factor, it takes longer time, like few seconds, not few milliseconds. So 10,000 times slower than the physical force, but also they can transmit their biochemical signaling through growth factor receptor or any kind of cell memory receptor, and then it takes longer time. But anyhow, they can communicate each other. And then we learn how the cell sends the extracellular matrix using this lamella podium and the pillar podium. So lamella podium is perpendicularly acting structure. So this is some kind of basic line to sense the outer environment, and then. Pilipodium is a finer touching feature. So they can touch the extracellular matrix and then they can feel. So this is some uh, horizon uh, following their axis, the actin filament are located. So you can imagine how the lamellar podium and the pilipodium were described in, in cell. And then but even though we can call it lamellar podium and pillar podium in two different terminology, but their fundamental structure is similar. They consist of actin and myosin muscle too, and then any kind of protein to link this actin each other, and then to sense their structure. So those are a protein complex consisting of this lamellar podium and the podium together. Then today, we are learn one of the some common themes in mechanical biology overall. But even though you cannot understand all, but based on this question, we can learn how the sense, how the cell sense the extracellular matrix. So mechanical biology describes the relationship between a cell and its environment. How a cell can detect, measure, and respond to the rigidity of its substrate, and how this process applies to larger biological system. So those are questions we ask by ourselves. How force transfers the cellular environment, how energy transfer across the cellular system, sensing an active or passive process. What type of force the cell encounter? How does the cytoskeleton transmit mechanical force? How the focal adhesion facilitate mechanical sensing? The focal adhesion sense the physical properties of the matrix. We can describe one by one from the next slide. So how are force transduced in cell environment? Like I said before, Mechanical force propagation takes microseconds, like 
you can change the color of the nucleus, which means uh, some heterochromatin, euchromatin, or chromatin structure change. So when the spores are detected by the cell membrane, integrin especially, they propagate their force to the nucleus, and then something change. In case of chemical signaling like gross factor, also when they are detected by gross factor receptor, it takes some biochemical signaling like this red color, and then they touch the nucleus. So we can call it mechanical versus chemical signal propagation. This is mechanical stress where the applied to the skeleton link receptor or generate due to the contractility reach the nucleus in less than 5 microseconds. So direct attention applied and propagation is depicted as a mechanical wave across the cytoskeleton network. This is kind of wave. You can see front, middle, last. Bottom means biochemical signal that originate at the membrane take tens of seconds to travel through their link network and cause a change in nucleus. You can see. So like chromatin remodeling, activate deactivate gene expression. So in any way, mechanical and chemical signaling are detected by the cell from different manner. Mechanical force, integrin, and actin, cytoskeleton, a link complex, and nucleus. Chemical signaling, receptor, and then biochemical signaling like you know, ARC, JNK, and June, or any kind of bio biochemical signaling you already have known. So you have to determine how the, how the cell touch and sense the outer environment by mechanical force or chemical signaling. Those are two important factors. And then the application of the tangibility, I show you later, semi flexible chain and dipole polarization model to biological scenarios has proven most successful in the case of tangibility hypothesis. The model described above and read us to consider the following three key concepts which characterize the mechanical transaction of force in cellular environment. So you have to know the tangibility to understand our cell model. Like, so this is tangibility. So tangibility means tension and integrity. Integrity means they can form their uh, structure. And tension means in the middle of the tension. So this is some, some kind of just iron um, filament. And then you can see this kind of little uh, like silk or filament between the ion filament. So those are tension each other. But along their tension, they can maintain their structure. So I will show you this in YouTube, how the cell describe their feature. Uh, ever since Tensegrity went out of business, there has been no way to get Tensegrity models. So I'm very happy that Eli Thompson of Tensegrity is making these models for us. Uh, what you can see here, this is the very simplest model with two struts in this domain, two struts in this axis, and two struts in this axis, and the rubber bands going between them. So in this simple model, the uh, struts are like the bones and the elastics are like the myofascia. And you can see that when you move the structure, the whole thing accommodates. One of the ways in which it's really cool in which the whole way accommodates is look at the two parallel struts, this one and this one. As I press these together, those are going to come apart, right? Oops, nope, those come together. And even these parallel ones come together. I hope you can see that. Um, it's really interesting. And again, if I expand in one dimension, it expands in all dimension. 
bodies do this. You get bodies to open up from front to back, and they open up from side to side, and they even get taller. And tensegrity structures are the thing that do this. But it's just great to explain to your clients how the um, balance between the bones and the myofascia is in there. The other thing is, if I push this, where is it going to break? The strain is distributed throughout the structure. So where it's going to break is at its weakest point. What an osteopath might call a lesion, a chiropractor might call a facilitated segment, and your clients call their place. Because no matter where the stress comes from, it's going to poke out at whatever point is weakest, the one you've been working on for the last five years. All right, hope you enjoyed these tens. So this is some tensegrity. So as you, as you observe this feature, so even though you touch certain uh, certain structure in certain way, but everything's are affected. So even small change of the mechanical force can change other or parameter, and then because they are all linked together. So even though this this person described as a body like bone and muscle, but if you apply this concept in the cell, this is the actin. And then uh, acting, but they are, and then between, between the acting filament, they are all linked together through some cell membrane or any kind of intercellular structure. So it's when you apply in one direction of force, everything are affected. So this is a concept of tangibility to maintain their um, morphology in the between of tension and integrity. So this uh, tangibility uh, leads us to consider the following three key concepts. So mechanical signaling propagation is rapid due to the tangibility. And the press stress cell structure promotes long distance force propagation. Mechanochemical conversion can be induced from a distance. So let's say cell doesn't have any tangibility, which means they are not tension and they are, they, are, they are not tensioned. And then, the mechanical force cannot propagate rapidly, right? Because they are tensioned each other, and then their signal, mechanical signal can fast move. In the case of the press stress cell structure, also promotes long distance force propagation. Actually, this is a similar manner, which means, uh, when you transfer some signal, but mechanical signal, in the long way, they should connect each other, and then they are losing their tension. They are not transmit to the long distance. So because of their tension each other, their press stress. Press stress means to stress something. They promote long distance force propagation. And then, because of this, mechanical chemical conversion can be induced from a distance far away. So because of tension, they move fast, and then they can reach longer. Because of lo these two phenomena, biochemical conversion can be induced from a long distance. So compared to soluble, ligand-induced signal transduction Mechanical force applied to cell are transmit more than 10, 1,000 times faster along the scale of filament. For example, activation of SRC kinase by me mechanical stimulation has been shown to occur in under a second, while its activation by chemical stimulation requires tens of seconds or longer. So even though you exactly activate the same uh, biochemical signaling like SRC kinase, which is very important for cell, in terms of mechanical force, it will take less than second, like microsecond. But in case of uh, chemical signaling, it takes 10 seconds, tens of seconds. And tangibility model characterizes the cell as a hardwired entity, composed of press stress at skeleton filament and an elastic cytosol. It's contrast to other models representing cell as a homogeneous elastic solid, where all stress bearing components, namely the skeleton and cytosol, have the same stiffness. Force signal rapidly decay. So in case 
when we imagine the cell as just a homogeneous elastic solid, force cannot propagate. But when they are link and tension each other, the force can propagate to longer distance. And the bio mechanical transistor under tension are mechanically anisotropic. For example, elastic or response dependent on the direction of stress loading. Externally applied stress is distributed to point a few microns away from that of the applied force, according to the distribution at a time of pre-existing tangent force. So, a mechanical response can therefore observe a local as well as distance site. So, yeah, this is a feature of the tangibility. And the next question is, how is energy transferred across the cellular system? So you can know this, uh, we need some energy to, to do something, right? Let's say this is an enzyme, and then uh, especially this kind of threshold for activating something, right? So when the enzyme like activated, the energy can decrease and then we can move this ball to the other side. But this kind of uh, bone energy status can be activated by the mechanical force, not even the enzyme, biochemical signal. So let's say this is the binding site, then this is the signal protein, so that's the pr protein. And then when the force is automated to the cell, they are binding each other, and then they can start signaling and tension reinforcement. So also you can imagine when the force is generated to the cell, not even the biochemical signaling, the force can itself can activate some signaling through their physical binding between their receptor and the, their uh, signal protein. So uh, you can imagine this uh, physical force can mimic the enzymatic activity using the biophysical bio touching. The cellular system function at nanometer level and use a highly dynamic set of components. Both of these factors act as a primary constraints that prevent the generation of momentum within the cell. Energy is therefore introduced into the system by high energy ligands such as ATP or GTP. The effect of energy transfer across the cellular system on molecular process follow the two principles below, which is energy is harnessed by capturing conform conformational stages. Second one is molecular dynamics are regulated by force sensing. So you can imagine how the energy is harnessed by capturing conformational stage. So energy, when you, when you imagine the energy, anyhow they have to link each other. They need energy. But instead of they use energy, we can just touch them together by physical force. So we can replace the energy by our hands. So this is some energy harnessed by capturing conformation stage. Just we can make them touch each other. The second one is molecular dynamics are regulated by force sensing. So after touching them each other, molecular dynamics are propagated from their sensing. So when a complex of protein has bonds that made it protein-protein interaction as well as those that maintain its own conformation. Upon force application, the dis dissociation of bond between protein and complex compete with the dissociation of bond with the protein, with the latter instance being favored as this allows the complex as a whole to maintain tension. This has been demonstrated using actin, filamin, and alpha actinin. So you can imagine the protein-protein interaction. Uh, when 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 you imagine the signaling like arc signaling, arc phospho arc or YAPTAS or PH1, they need protein-protein interaction. And then how the protein-protein interaction are propagated? So they can uh, interact each other using their biochemical signaling like certain. Um, certain other protein, but
but as well as when they physically interact each other and then they, we can facilitate the protein protein interaction so the second means that uh, molecular dynamics also facilitated by the physical touching or physical interaction with each other. And is, is mechanical sensing an active or passive? So this is a cell like epithelial cell uh, lining the, your skin. You can imagine cell membrane like uh, including this uh, mechanical sensing ion channel or just ion channel. And then you can imagine cell matrix in adhesion using integrins or focal adhesion complex. Also you can imagine cell-cell interaction like this kind of connection and then cardioid family. So sometimes cell can sense the outer microenvironment by passive or active. So passive means can be exemplified by the detection of the fluid shear stress by endocellular cell. So let's say this endocellular cell, and then this is body fluid like blood or any kind of movement of the fluid. And then you can passively sense the movement of the fluid by primary cilium or any kind of mechanical sensing channel. This is called passive mechanical sensing. Active means by force generation to promote cell movement from soft substrate to the stiffer substrate in a process termed neurotaxis and in the detection of the surface topology. So active means the cell can itself they can touch the outer microenvironment. So when they move, when the cell move on the substrate, and then they can sense the soft or stiff by the integrin or focal and complex. Yeah, they pull and push the microenvironment and they can sense, which is called active mechanical sensing. And the other way is when they uh, move or grow on the very, um, how can I say, a loughness, Lofrin substrate or just flat substrate, they can sense, they can touch. This is active. So cells can sense the outer microenvironment by passive manner and active manner. So you can imagine how the cells sense the microenvironment. And then what types of force do cells encounter? So this you can imagine this is some uh, epithelial cell, and then uh, as I told last week presentation, we can imagine this is some actin, and red one is actin, and then yellow one is a microtubule, and then blue one is intermediate filament. <coughs> Those are the our most important feature to consist of this cell, and then dozer can sense the auto microenvironment mechanical force so most of most of the force can be detected by the filament and the filament they can link to the, directly to the nucleus and then they can touch but other microtuber and the intermediate filament also they can touch so cells and subcellular substructure experience force from a variety of source in general force are developed from within the cell via the cytoskeleton endogenous force or come from outside the cell like occluded force. Force exerted on the cell are often dynamic in nature, requiring the cell to constantly reevaluate its status and adjust its ex internal and external morphology accordingly. Although the mechanical sensor and mechanical transduction events occur locally at the cell periphery, the force and biochemical signals are transmitted throughout the cell and are integrated over time. In general, they promote stiffening, softening, and reorientation of cytoskeleton filament. This results in strengthening of the entire contracted machinery without disturbing cellular connectivity. So because this uh, our 
such as skeleton, actin filament, microtubule, and interfilament, they are all are linked together. And then we can sense the outer microenvironment. Even though these micro, uh, outer microenvironment are occur in cell periphery, but this force can transmit to the nucleus and then other uh, components of the cell. So we can simply imagine shear force from the body fluid. So they can be touched by the cell and the tension and compression. So uh, every kind of force you can imagine can be sensed directly by the cell. So we can define as a two manner like endogenous force and applied force. Applied force we can ima easily imagine like tension, compression. Tension means they are uh, touch each other. Compression means they are aparting each other. Shear means like this body fluid on the cell. And then even swelling and the contraction. So everything they are applied by the outer environment, which is applied force. And except the applied force, we can also imagine endogenous force, which means during cytoskeleton assembly, when such skeleton they are assembled each other, the filament sub subunit encounter intermolecular bonding force that attracts, pulls or tends its neighboring subunit. So, for example, in non-muscle cells, contractile resistance to deformation is provided by the ectomycin machinery. This machinery generates tensional force by remodeling and exert traction force on cell cell or cell matrix in adhesion thereby creating a resting tension within the cell. So this cell, they can move, and then they can differentiate in certain limits. And then at the same time, they can generate their endogenous force when they move. So they can touch and feel their endogenous force. So let's say you, this stem cell can differentiate, differentiate to the bone, osteoblast, also, they need some endogenous force because they have to deposit some ECM and then they, they have to move to the side of the bone construction. And then, at the same time, they feel the endogenous force. So these are two forces you can categorize by the cell. Endogenous force, when they migrate, when they differentiate, when they sense the automatic environment, and then when the direct force can be applied to the cell. So force applied at a macro scale causes a change in strength of the cell cell or cell matrix association. This activates mechanical sensor and signals down through the cellular network via the cell membrane, or the receptor and focal agent. Specific pathway focus the force onto the protein complex that comprise a functional module. This mechanical transduction event allows the cell to distinguish the chemical nature and the stiffness of the underlying sur surface, as well as specific types of extracellular matrix fibers. These factors influence the down signaling signal and then subject the event that lead to the altered cell morphology. So, anyhow, you can imagine cell sense the outer, outer environment and then they can propagate the cell cell interaction and cell matrix interaction as well. And then how does the cytoskeleton transmit the mechanical force? <coughs> Let's say this is a cell membrane and it's actin filament and uh, this is a red one is protein link, linking the active filament. <coughs> and then when certain force applied, you can imagine they are aligned each other and then <coughs> protein complex, they are close each other. So uh, as I told before, because of tangibility, this force can rap rapidly propagate to the other like nucleus and then they can uh, interactively touch each other. So when source such as contracted stress fiber generate internal cell force, 
the force is transmitted through the array of the active filament. Macular sensor proteins and complex that are linked to the cytoskeletal network can be locally concentrated. So they are apart each other, but somehow when, when force applied, they are concentrated, they are close to each other. So thus, force not only causes direct formation of mechanical sensor to modify the activity, but clustering may also promote mechanical transduction by modulating enzyme kin kinetics, enzyme and substrate binding. So force not only causes direct formation of the, this sensor, so when you imagine some PHO1 or mechanical sensing ion channel, they can touch by the mechanical force, and then the internal like protein also they are close to each other by mechanical sensing and then their alignment. So the process by which mechanical stimuli are transmitted to the cell to extract the aforementioned effect is termed mechanical transduction. So the term terminology of mechanical transduction means that when the mechanical stimuli is transmitted into the cell and then they need certain uh, mechanical line. This is which I call it mechanical transduction. So normally we, as you know, integrin and filament and link complex and nucleus membrane and chromatin. This is mechanical transduction. The cytoskeletal filament are suggested to transmit local stress over long distance. And on such, such cytoskeleton and link, Excess matrix are proposed as a means to focus force upon molecules that can, that can transmit mechanical transduction. Yeah. Why, how the mechanical transduction can occur? When the cytoskeleton and nucleus, when they, are, when they are not touching each other physically, we cannot call it mechanical transduction. But they are all linked together, and then they are tension each other, and, and then we can call it mechanical transduction. So this mechanical force influence mechanical sensor to promote mechanical transduction in a variety of ways. So, uh, sorry. So you can, you can imagine force can cause protein unfolding while unraveling to expose otherwise hidden domains that regulate or control catalytic activity. So protein unfolding and unraveling is important to expose their target site. So force can reveal their target site from the protein. And force can structurally expose protein binding domains. For other structural components or signal transduction proteins, those are linked together. Right? Protein unfolding, they can expose protein binding domains. And force such as thermal energy, even pressure or rigidity can alter tension of course membrane to modulate mechanical sensitive ion channel like PHO1 and 2. So force can change ion channel as well. And the force can influence assembly, stability, and turnover of receptor ligand complex and functional module component. So let's say you have BMP. This is some bone morphogenic protein. And then this protein should be detected by BMP receptor, right? But even this BMP receptor can be modulated by the force. So, and any kind of assembly, stability, or turnover of receptor ligand complex can be modeled by force. And force can bring molecular complex together to increase their local concentration. This clustering may augment or regulate the activity of the individual component, as I showed before. So force can mediate those kind of features. So always you can imagine the cell, how the cell sends the matrix or you, on your material you develop, 
you can imagine how the how the force are generated. So for example, if you make some nanofiber, and then when you see the cell on the nanofiber, you, you have to imagine how the cell sends the nanofiber. Oh. When they have small diameter or large diameter, how the cells sense this diameter parameter, or their stiffness, or their stress relaxation. So as you're already familiar with this feature, let's say this, this is some extracellular matrix, and then through integrating, they are linked to acting filament. And this is, we can call it, focal as a complex. Yeah. So integrating back here, myosin, they link to the acting filament to move, and paxlin, one of the focal in the complex, and ENA and BASB is also one of the focal in the complex, and vinculin here, actinin, and tallin, and zysin or tensin. So those are focal as a complex to mediate this integrin and actin. So a, a major focal con contains hundreds of proteins that are grouped based on their contribution to four basic processes. So we can just call it focal as a complex, but they consist of hundreds of com hundreds of proteins. So this is a few of the feature of protein, but other 95 proteins are there. So this focus on the constraint, they can mediate this receptor matrix binding, linkage to actin and skeleton, intercellular signal transduction, and actin polymerization. I think you guys are already familiar with this four feature, right? Receptor matrix binding means uh, how the integrin or receptor and matrix, they can bind together. And then, linkage to actin such skeleton. This focus complex can mediate the integrate and actin filament. So they can link to integrate and actin filament. And then, intercellular signal transduction. Also, uh, this focus complex, they can start to activate other biochemical signal. And then, actin polymerization. When they have more uh, focal adhesion, they need more actin. So they can facilitate actin polymerization. And the focal adhesion are known to sense both chemical and physical property of their matrix environment. We can easily imagine this focal adhesion only sense the physical property like a stiffness or a relaxation, but they can also sense chemical signaling. Chemical sensing is mediated by the different types of receptor that may function actively synergically or anagonistically. However, even with the molecular repertory of focal adhesion having been unrevealed substantially, the details of function interplay between this protein on sensing mechanical force remain fairly elusive. It can only be suggested that focal adhesion undergo regular turnover at any given time governed by diverse environment signals. So you, there's another concept is like uh, integrin and focal adhesion complex that can sense physical as well as chemical signaling. So the chemical signaling sensing is not revealed far away. So if you see this kind of concept in your study, you can increase your impact. How the focal adhesion facilitates the mechanical sensing? Metric density, spacing, rigidity, and orientation and geometry are some of the physical parameters the focal adhesion and in turn, cells are known to sensitive to. However, over years, the mechanism that integrates such complex inf information have not been understood. Only recently, the key determinant of rigidity sensing by integrins have been described. So, so, so this focal adhesion, specialized mechanical sensing, and then by this density spacing. Density means how the matrix is constrained. They are less constrained or more constrained. Rigidity, as you know, stiffness. 
and their orientation. They are aligned or not aligned. So if you have aligned nanofiber, aligned something, cell can touch, sense. But they, they are not randomly oriented also, they can touch. And geometry, how the topology are mediated. So, strength of the integrin exchange bond, rate of cell protrusion retraction, force produced during protrusion retraction, and elasticity of associated mechanosensitive proteins. Those are, you can imagine, by the sense, by the focal adhesion. Using the focal adhesion, the cell can touch the ECM and then they can feel the strength. And then because of the focal adhesion, they can, protrusion and retraction is, protrusion means they go forward. Retraction is uh, the other side. When, they, when the cell migrate, they need protrusion on the forwarding way and the retraction from their back, backward way. So focal adhesion, they can mediate how the cell migrate fast. And then during the, their migration, they can also generate the force by the focal adhesion. Actually, when, they mi when the cell migrates, the focal adhesion is needed because they need force and uh, reactive force each other. And then, yeah, one and force are there connect each other. Elasticity of association between sensitive protein also sensed by the focal adhesion. So remarkable feature of a cell matrix adhesion, which makes them more versatile than any individual surface of receptor, is a large repertory of mechanical sensitive and signaling components in their cytoplasmic scaffold. Mechanical transduction most likely occur through protein conformation change in multimodular proteins that act as a molecular switches, leading to subsequent phosphorylation signaling pathway and addition of components. So, yeah, this mechanical transduction they can be mediated by the focal adhesion, and then focal adhesion they can uh, play many roles to touch this kind of mechanism. And then when 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 you imagine the focal adhesion, this is very new feature. How you imagine this focal adhesion? Focal adhesion are considered to be elastic made of small unit of represented by the hexagonal building blocks that act like a short springs. Focal adhesion is not uh, just concrete uh, proteins. You can imagine as a some spring, short spring, and they are very elastic. So this is some R RGD sequence or any kind of binding site. And then, and, this, and then when, when your cell like integrin, touch this binding site, focal adhesion as a spring, they can assemble each other. So let's say your cell go, go this way, and then this focal adhesion, like uh, short springs, they can sense the integrin mediated force, and then they can assemble each other. And then when they touch their cell membrane from the inside to the outside, the focal adhesion can be complex each other and then they can maintain this migration. So A is, consider the focal adhesion components are scattered outside the adhesion structure and when added to focal adhesion, they attach to the ECM through pack-like structure on cell surface. B is, Focal adhesion is pulled by force from ectomycin contraction. The constituent aggregates get stretched and tension prevails. C is this drive the self-assembly at point of force application by insertion of new aggregates leading to energy relaxation. So when the focal adhesion like spring, they can touch and then they can assemble they want to decrease their energy. So when they sense certain mechanical force, and then 
they want to assemble each other to set, this is called self-assembly to decrease their energy yeah. this is some uh, based on the energy point of view how the buffer design like spring components they can complex each other so uh, basically this buffer design they love they favor to complex each other and then when they meet the certain environment when they complex each other they are happy so they are making their uh, focal design complex yeah. so th this is not how can I say this is a more favorable manner yeah. the spring they can bind them together they love but they just want to know how and when they are touching each other so when the cell, they are touching the ECM, and then they integrate, and then they migrate them together, and then finally they are happy to assemble each other. This is some concept of the focal adhesion. They are not passive. Actually, we can say, say that they are a little passive, but they always love to contact each other. So these are formulated based on the principle that applied force can reduce the energy requirement of conformation transition or compensate for the energy spent during transition. So you can simply imagine these three mechanisms. Stress-driven mechanism, strain-driven mechanism, thermodynamic model like a mechanism. When the focal adhesion sense the automatic outer environment. Straight ray model proposes that stress sensing happens at the focal and acting bundle interface and most of the pro proteins that act as a molecular switch change to an active conformation when the stress they experience exceeds a critical value. One more time, stress driven model proposes that stress sensing happens at the focus and actin bundle interface and most of the protein that act as a molecular switch change to an active conformation when the stress they experience exceed a critical value. So when there is a stress or focal adhesion bundle interferes there they occur happen at the stress sensing site. So this is stress driven mechanism. A stress driven mechanism means focal adhesion are envisioned as two layer structure where the lower integrin containing layers interact with the substrate and is mechanical sensitive. When the upper layer is subject to the force due to actin dynamics, a local strain is experienced on the top of the mechanical sensitive layer at the front edge of the cell. This compression active the elastic plaque protein in the lower layer increase the affinity and trigger anisotropic growth of focal adhesion in the direction of a pulling force. The strain driven mechanism, they deal with two layer structure, upper and lower. And then this lower means integrin and ECM interaction. And then upper means their focal adhesion and integrin layers. So when they When, they, when the cell, let's say cell is originally the round shape, right? Round shape, but when they touch the substrate, they have to touching and then they have to spread through the substrate. And then they can feel the strain. And then when they feel the strain, the focal adhesion can be complex each other. So as you can imagine, when the, when the cell stretching or spreading, always strain is produced and then stress also produced. We cannot differentiate easily the stress and strain. But anyhow, this is some feature how the cell, we cannot differentiate perfectly strain drive the focal edge complex or stress drive the focal edge complex. But they are all linked together. The thermodynamic model is, this model is based on thermodynamic principle that stretching the focal adhesion decrease the chemical potential of any given protein with the plaque 
of this model, focal density is elastic in nature. The stretching in direction parallel to the plasma membrane happened due to contractive force of the attached stress fiber. Thermodynamic means that the, when the cell stretch on the substrate, uh, they can decrease their energy when the focal adhesion are complex each other. Yeah. This is some same manner. The focal adhesion is not very passive. They, are, they want to, they love to interact with each other, so which, which means they decrease their energy. And then uh, when, they, when the cell touch the ECM, and then they love to attaching and combining the integrate and focal adhesion together. So this is called thermodynamic model. Okay. So, yeah. So we are trying to understand how the cell sends the matrix. And then this is our last figure for this lecture. So let's say as you display last week and today, this is some integrate alpha and beta. They are two. They are originally inactive here, right? But when they sense the extracellular matrix through the stress or extracellular ECM, they can be activated. And then alpha and beta integrate, they are stand up. We can call it integrin activation. And then this active tallin, also tallin only touching the beta integrin, not alpha, only beta. And then this, is, this integrin is activated, focal adhesion, or they feel, oh, okay, the cell sends the ECM, and then now we want to decrease the energy, and then we want to combine them together. So they can make a focal adhesion protein complex. And then they can make it actin polymerization, and then they can transduce signal signaling, biochemical signal. And then also you can imagine this growth factor receptor, this, this is here, and when the growth factor are combined with the growth receptor, and then they can cause signal through growth factor receptor mediated signaling as well as focal adhesion signaling. So the signaling C from growth factor and signaling B from the uh, focal adhesion actin filament, they can synergetically interaction each other, and then they can make another signal. So, so from the next week, we are more jump to the this integrin. How the what is the integrin feature? Integrin have many subtypes, and then which kind of cell you can detect the integrin, and then how you analyze which integrin is mediated on your substrate or on your complex. That can be lectured next week. Okay. Thank you.